Hi, I'm KK. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Life doesn't exist without water. Water forms the basic raw material for metabolic processes to happen. Apart from supporting life, water is used for agriculture, industries, drinking, cooking, bathing and cleaning. You can see how much of the total available water is used for these activities. This lesson is about the management of water and coal resources. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain the importance of water resource management, explain various methods of water resource management and their advantages and disadvantages, explain the importance of managing our coal and petroleum resources. List some alternative energy sources that can reduce our dependence on limited coal and petroleum resources. Describe your role as an individual in conserving energy derived from limited resources. Water is important for many diverse activities. Let me give you an idea of how much water we actually use for some basic activities. As you can see, our need and use of water is huge. There is so much water available in the world, but only a small fraction of it is usable. This may pose as a challenge. The rainfall pattern in India differs in different geographical regions. Tropical regions receive more rainfall compared to desert regions. Rains in India are largely due to the monsoons which come only for few months, generally between June and September. To understand water availability better, let's take a look at the water cycle. The water of aquatic bodies evaporates in the sunlight. The resulting water vapor condenses into clouds. Air currents move these clouds towards land and water eventually falls back as rain and snow through a process called precipitation. Some of this water flows into the land and collects as groundwater, while the rest drains back into water bodies. That's how the water cycle renews itself. This means water is always available but in different forms. Around 97.5% of water in oceans is salty. 1.75% of fresh water remains frozen in glaciers and polar ice caps, while the rest, 0.75%, exists as groundwater. We can now understand that the usage of water is more when compared to the availability. But even the available fresh water is fast diminishing, which is a major cause of concern. This happens because of the following three reasons. Human activity results in the loss of forest cover which in turn reduces the amount of water vapor released during evotranspiration. Deforestation has also reduced the recharging of underground water. Secondly, a lot of water is diverted for high water demanding crops. Lastly, dumping of industrial and urban wastes into lakes and rivers results in water pollution. These factors are even affecting groundwater reserves. Groundwater is especially important to conserve because of the following advantages. It does not evaporate. It spreads out to recharge wells. It provides moisture for widespread vegetation. 
It does not create breeding grounds for mosquitoes and it is relatively protected from contamination of human and animal waste. Therefore, it is very important to manage our water resources well and preserve it. Let us take a look at some ways in which this is done. One of the common methods of water resource management is to build dams. A dam is a structure used to divide and retain water in a particular area. Dams are used to generate hydroelectric power. They are also used for agriculture and in cities through canal systems that transport stored water to great distances. The Indira Gandhi Canal is one of the biggest canal projects in India, which brought greenery to northwestern parts of Rajasthan. Another major benefit of dams is that they help to control floods in an area. Some famous dams in India are the Bakranangal Dam, the Sardar Sarovar Dam and the Tehri Dam. The Hoover Dam in the US and the Aswan Dam in Egypt are some internationally famous dams. Unfortunately, dams also pose several problems. You may be aware of the Narmada Bachao Andolan. It resists the plan to raise the height of the Sardar Sarovar Dam on the river Narmada. Tehri Dam on the river Ganga is another such example where people are protesting against the construction of large dams. But, why the opposition? Let's look at the reasons. Dams are constructed in an area by deforesting the land, thereby causing loss to the biodiversity existing in the area. Further, Dams block the sedimentation that rivers carry downstream. This clogs up the dam, making it less and less useful as a water reservoir over time. Finally, storing water in reservoirs changes its physical chemical properties, which impacts the animal and plant life in the reservoir as well as the river. This is sometimes severe enough to eradicate an entire species from an area. Construction of dams sometimes also has a serious social impact. This is because large number of local villages and tribes are required to be displaced. They are provided rehabilitation and compensation for their losses, which is often not a fair deal. Finally, construction of dams also poses economic problems. Managing water through dams is very expensive. Unless a dam provides proportionate returns in the form of electricity and water supply, it is not worth spending so much money. So you see, dams have several environmental, social, and economic disadvantages. In fact, before constructing these dams, Indians used several environment-friendly small local methods like watershed management and water harvesting. Watershed management aims for water conservation in order to increase the biomass production. Water harvesting is an age-old concept in India. Water harvesting techniques are named differently at different places, but the use remains the same. For example, they are called Khadins and Nadis in Rajasthan, Bandaras and Tals in Maharashtra, Bundis in Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh, Ahars and Pinus in Bihar, and Eris in Tamil Nadu. I can take you on a tour of some of these places. Interested? Let's go. 
Our first stop is a small village in Himachal Pradesh. Here the locals use a system of kuls. A kul is a system of man-made channels that diverts available water from streams to several villages down the hillsides. The benefit of this system is that it causes no damage to the environment. Also, local people manage the kuls themselves and ensure fair and equitable distribution of the water. Our next stop is Kerala. Local farmers here use a system of kattas or low-cost small check dams that are constructed across small rivulets to store water. These are typically made of stones and mud and are dismantled before the monsoons arrive to prevent flooding. Also, since they are built communally, the water is shared equally by all. Let's now move to Karnataka. I want to tell you about another local water management project that involves networked ponds connected through trenches. Because of the slope of the land, the connected ponds are able to feed into each other and irrigate a large area. The system of ponds transformed the dry land of the area to a place that has water available for more than nine months in a year. The cropping patterns in the region have changed and the amount of yield per year has increased tremendously. Here's another example from Karnataka. Some villagers in Sirsi in northern Karnataka have adopted a simple system of digging trenches on their land to prevent leaching of soil as well as runoff rainwater. Over time, this simple, low-cost method has led to a dramatic increase in the amount of available water allowing the villages to manage even when the annual rains are delayed. We've talked about a lot of different methods of managing water resources, haven't we? Ha ho! Looks like the sun is coming out now. Which means I'll have to evaporate soon. Before I leave through, I'd like you to meet my friend Carbo. There he is. In case you haven't noticed, I'm a piece of coal. I'm also fast diminishing. Coal and petroleum are non-renewable sources of energy. This means that they are going to finish sooner or later. Coal was formed hundreds of millions of years ago as a result of the action of heat and pressure on decaying, buried plants in the swampy areas of Earth. In fact, this is a continuous process. There are still many areas on Earth where decay and burial of plants may, over millions of years, lead to the formation of more coal. I am very useful. Humans use me as a major source of energy. In fact, 37% of the world's electricity is produced using coal. This is also because coal is cheaper than other fuels like petroleum and gas, which are also non-renewable. However, Fossil fuels also have some disadvantages. They contain carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur, which when burned create carbon dioxide, water, oxides of nitrogen, and oxides of sulfur. And when they are burned with less oxygen, Carbon monoxide is formed. 
A lot of these gases are poisonous at high concentrations. Also, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, which contributes to global warming. Therefore, it is important to use coal and petroleum reserves carefully. Not only are these fossil fuels scarce, they also lead to a lot of environmental hazards. But what other options do you have? There are several other options for generating energy, such as wind, solar, thermal, and hydroelectric energy. These are all viable options since they are more environment friendly. Energy conservation is very important to manage natural resources. Each one of you have a very important role to play in this project of energy conservation. This is because these resources belong to you. If you don't help to conserve them, chances are you and future generations will not be able to enjoy them for long. Luckily, there are several things you can do as individuals to conserve energy. Here are some tips. You can make a habit of recycling and reusing things like plastic bags, bottles, jars, etc. You can try to reduce your consumption of electricity. Switch off lights and fans when you're not using them. You can change your light bulbs to CFL bulbs to save the energy used at home. You can reduce your fuel consumption by taking a bus, cycling or walking. You can plant trees to help give back what you're taking from the environment. Finally, you can also share your knowledge about energy conservation and try to create social awareness. So you see, if you use coal carefully, you might still see me a few hundred years from now. Goodbye.